welcome to my David Wilson Out and About YouTube channel. Well, my first proper video of the year, and uh, I've been and bought myself an e-bike, as you can see just below in its folded state. Um, this video is just going to be my first impression. I've been out on it a couple of times over the last couple of weeks, and it's freezing cold at the moment, so uh, it's been <laughs> a bit of a challenge getting out on it. But what I'm going to do this afternoon is just go over a few of the features of the bike, a few of the mods that I've done or accessories that I've added. And then um, if the wind drops, because it's very, very windy today, I'll take it out for a ride and we can test it out in its different settings, etc. Right, so what I'm going to do first is actually put the battery in and get the bike unfolded. You may notice I'll do this before I put the battery in, but I've actually put some very small foam pads, sticky one side on the battery, all around the battery. That is because when the battery is actually in the case, it does rattle when you're riding along. Um, I knew of this before I bought it from other YouTubers or other people that have done reviews, so I'd already ordered them and they work a treat. No, no battery rattle. So uh, anyway, I'll get on with unfolding the bike, which is very, very simple. And then I'll get back to you. Right, here we have it. That's the bike unfolded and locked in now. I wasn't going to show you that. There's absolutely dozens of YouTube videos showing the taking it out of the box, folding it in half, inserting the battery. So I'm going to skip all that and just do my own thing. The only thing I will say, and this is probably the first con of this bike, is fancy putting the key underneath the bike. I mean, I, I take the battery in. It's very cold at the moment. The bike can stay in the porch or this little outside cupboard here, but the battery has to come in because of the cold weather because it'll be seriously affected by it. So the battery has to come out each time. And getting the battery in is really fiddly. You get it in, you've got to turn the key one way to actually lock it in, and then uh, you can turn it around for ignition. But it's it's absolute nightmare. With the bike folded, the wires seem to move over. There's a big clunk of wires under here, and they seem to move over in the way of the keyhole. Um, I suppose maybe with time and more use, I'll just get used to it. I'll just come out and know exactly where the, the key goes. But again, for, for me at the moment, that's a con. That should have been in the side, yeah, or on the top of the frame or, or something like that, where it was actually easily accessible. Oh, it's certainly windy out here, but uh, I'll soldier on, hope uh, it comes out okay. Okay, I'm using a bit of a cheat sheet because um, I've been out on the bike a couple of times, but it's been over the three week period. So I was sort of beginning to forget what I was um, trying to log in my head. I think it's just uh, an old age thing. Now, I've been looking in buying, looking at buying an e-bike for probably 18 months now, and then I kept discarding the fault because uh, I'm, I'm more into camping, hiking, kayaking, but Christmas I thought, oh, what the hell. So after Christmas and in between New Year, I decided to take the plunge. But I did do a lot of research, and as I said, I had been doing for mainly over a year. And uh, using my cheap sheet, um, the ones I was mainly looking at in the price range were the uh, Fido DS T4S and the Hemo Z20. And then this one come up. Now, initially I wasn't that interested in this one, uh, but what drew me back to it was the fact that the tires are slightly larger than the other two bikes. Um, and it has suspension. Well, it has front suspension and a seat post suspension. So. Uh, I do want to do very, very light off-roading or gravelling, so I might be sort of riding in with a... I might be driving so far and then riding in with a, a tent on the, the front bar and a X amount of kit, so just to try to do an overnight wild camp. So what drew me to this bike? Well, to explain that, we've got to go uh, talk about the other bikes. So as I said, the first one was the Fido D4S. I, I spent a lot of time looking at that. and one of the main well one of the main things i've already touched on obviously no suspension which um, this has uh, the other thing was the battery was not removable now i knew that there were two things i may actually want to carry a spare battery i may be going a bit further than the range or maybe going to a distance where one battery is used up and then i'd have a, a swap out battery to get myself back the next day so that was quite important and this this cold weather business that i I'm not necessarily going to leave the bike outside, but I can do, but I definitely want the battery indoors. Also, the battery removable for extra security. You can literally 
pull up somewhere, chain your bike up, fold it, take your battery out, and literally you've got half the value of the bike on your person. So uh, that was a big issue for me. The other thing with the D4S was on the YouTube videos, a lot of people were complaining about brake judder, brake squeak and judder, and they were working on it and they tried all sorts. And no one seemed to be able to resolve the issue without swapping the brakes out for hydraulic brakes, which again, you're buying it and then instantly you're playing around with it. I really didn't fancy that. Also, the smaller size tires slightly, I did see it compared to this bike off-road or across grass and on gravel and this one came out tops. The Hemo Z20, very very similar thing, I think the battery is removable on that one, but I can't actually remember, but obviously again, no suspension. Um, that one could not be unlocked, I'm not planning on making this uh, illegal, but if I am off trail or on private land, I will open this up, get its top speed and get the throttle going. So. Uh, and obviously no suspension, but basically that was a real, real close contender and quite a bit more expensive than this one. But there you go. I've opted for this one. So back to the 80 A20 Plus. So what is the difference? Well, literally when I was watching the YouTube videos, a lot of them were sort of eight months to 12 months old, which, um, yeah, no problem. They were explaining the, the pros and cons of the bike. But what actually happened in, I think it was November or maybe October last year, is they upgraded it from the 80 A20 to the A20 Plus, changed the controller and a few other features. So what you've got, you've got a different controller on it. You've got a few extras, you've got a backlight fitted, although I've swapped that out, which the other one didn't have. And you've got reflectors on both the wheels. So basically it's just a seemingly a few minor changes. Controller wise, there was quite a bit of difference, as in altering the speeds and setting up. So um, I had to do a little bit of digging, but I'm going to talk you through that on this video. Um, the basics of the controller is when you was looking at the old videos, there was 20 settings. Once you went into the settings, P settings. Now there's 16, so there's several missing. Um, but as I said, I'll talk you through that in a minute. Before I go into the bike settings, I just thought I'd show you around a few of the accessories that I've fitted on the bike and things I've swapped out. So if we move a bit closer to the main bars, front bars. First thing I swapped out was the supplied phone holder. I mean, Edo generously sent you, send you a free phone holder, but I found it a little bit cheap and tacky and I didn't fancy my expensive phone housed in that going over sort of gravel. So uh, I swapped that out. I've fitted two extender bars. I'll put the sizes in the video below. Um, you've got the larger one here and I've got a small, quite a small seven litre front bar bag on there. But underneath I've fitted a three inch bag, uh, bar so that obviously as soon as you put the bag on it will sit on that. It's not over tight at the moment because the bag's really got no weight in it. But the idea of this is that Eventually, I'll be able to strap a tent on the front bar. Um, that might be modified slightly. So what I did on the main bar, I moved the USB charging port up onto the that bar, just leaving a little bit more space down there. As I said, this, this will all alter, but uh, you get the idea of it. The extension bar takes the bag away from the main bar and it stops it dropping down with weight in it onto the cables, which was a main main worry of mine, and obscuring some of the other features. Moving down, I've fitted a saddle bag. There is another bag to go on top of that, which is a phone holder, which I doubt I use, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to get another saddle bag to put on the top of that and get Velcro on the bottom of it, and uh, that'll probably be a homemade effort, so I can house a few bits. But basically that bag there, the two side pouches, they're to carry, purely to carry my bike tools. So, uh, you know, just my get out of jail toolkit. Moving down the bike, if you look down below the bike there, you can see the awkward position of where the keys go. Okay, moving up, there's a suspension seat post and I've swapped out the seat. I really found the other seat, well, quite uncomfortable 
and I didn't go I haven't been very far yet so uh, I've swapped that out and I've fitted a rear rack now I ordered that from China and it was supposed to be a disc brake rack and they've sent this piece of rubbish um, it's certainly not a disc brake rack so I can't put pannier bags on but I'm leaving it for the moment because I might be modifying some of my dry sacks my uh, kayaking dry sacks to actually go on it I'll see how I feel about that right you can see on the front bar there I think that's just temporary I've fitted my uh, alarm key that's that's the key for my rear light uh, which is a smart light I'll show you that in a moment and it's uh, an alarm brake light and light so what I'll do I'll take that off and I'll show you the rear light now there's my smart light that I was talking to you about and what I've done I've taken the supplied one off the back of the saddle post um, basically because as soon as I put a bag on it, it wasn't you couldn't see it so uh, and I fitted this on the back and what I've used is a few GoPro fittings have tightened them up quite nicely and I'll, I'll, I need to test them out make sure it doesn't all shake free but obviously that's well clear so if I've got big bags on the light will still be visible what I'll do with the remote I'll switch it on it has four settings I have done a review on this and I'll put the link in the far right corner that's your daylight mode solid and off it's also got an alarm so if I bell it up you hear for a beep and now it's alarmed I'm not going to set it off here I'll set it off on the ride when I do the uh, the test run and video of that so I'll switch off again that's it and that's it disarmed but as I said I'll show you all that and the brake light feature on the first video test run. Well, there you go. There's your controller display. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to power on. Power button's in the center there. So I'm just going to press that. Excuse my big fingers and plaster on one of my fingers. And there it is switched on. At the moment, you can see that it, what the display is reading. 0 miles per hour. Assist level 1. Yeah, you can alter the assist levels by pressing minus. Goes to 0 plus one, plus two, and plus three, and that's as high as it goes, and then you can drop back down. So I'm leaving it at one at the moment. At the bottom, there's the miles covered. Now what I did, I did clear the total mileage in the odometer, but that will basically give you your distance traveled. If I then change the screen, that will be your trip mileage at the bottom. And don't forget, I'm in miles because I'm in the UK. It comes factory set to kilometers. And there is your voltage. So it says uh, the remaining charge in your battery. Now, obviously a lot of people look at the little bars, which are actually above, I point to them. They're not that accurate. You're better off actually having it on this so you can keep an eye on that because it starts to die at 29 volts. So I would suggest you stay on that and uh, use that as your indicator of how much battery you've got left. Okay, let's press again. Time. I, I really don't know what you do with that, whether that's a minute timer or not. And then I'm back to the beginning. So to go into the settings, you press plus and minus, and then you come into the P modes, the P settings. And we're actually in P01, which is the backlight level. If I go plus, yeah, then it's increasing, and then obviously minus. Is decreasing I'll just leave that a minute and that will reset itself there you go it's reset back to the main display right from the main display we're going to go back in plus and the minus and if we hit the power button we go to po2 now that is how you want to read your mileage I mean at the moment as you can see I've got it in miles if you then press again it will go into kilometers and it comes factory set of kilometers obviously if you're living in a country where you use miles per hour, like the UK, you're probably gonna to want to switch it to your, you know, so you know what speed you're doing. So that's P2. And again, it goes back to the main display. P3, if I did that again, is voltage, and it's set at 36 volts. You don't really wanna alter that unless you're swapping out the battery for a 48 uh, volt battery, but it comes preset, so it should be correct. P4, auto sleep timer. I think they're coming what that's set for. Let's have a look, press, two, three, four, and it's set for 10 
minutes or 10 seconds i think it's 10 minutes so i'm going to leave that that's that's not important so again if you leave this it will just reset itself okay p5 is power assist levels now what it is it's set up for three power assist levels uh one well four zero one two and three are the actual assist levels you can actually add more power assist levels and then you'll get sort of this smoother increase in the speed right p6 is wheel diameter and that's preset at 20 inch and you've got 20 inch wheels on it so that's best left alone i'm only going to go through what i consider the important ones and i will list all these in the description below the video p7 leave it alone p8 is your speed level now the legal level and it is set at 25 kilometers per, per hour which is 15.5 mile per hour if you go into p8 you can increase it if you increase it to 100 and then let it set itself you will get up to i think it's something like 21 miles per hour out of it so uh, it, it increases the uh, total speed right p09 is throttle start so if you set that to the four zeros you're actually setting it so that the throttle will work once you set it into hybrid mode not while it's in pedal assist p11 is assist delay now assist delay means basically the how quickly the assist kicks in when you start pedaling and um, it's not instant it's normally a couple of you know, revolutions of the pedal before it kicks in if you set it to four uh, sorry zero 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 one it kicks in more or less instantly i'm skipping a few because they really shouldn't be touched now if you go to p15 you've got low voltage level and the low voltage level is set at something like 29 volts on this so that's when basically it's saying you need to recharge i don't really want to walk with that i'm i'm quite happy with that i don't want to raise it and i certainly don't want to lower it down so um that is it now, P16 is to reset the total mileage, the Odo meter, so you just can reset to zeros. So uh, that's what I, I did just to try it. I've done that once just to try it out. So, uh, so that is basically all the important settings. As I said, I'll list them in the video description below. Just quickly, I'm going to show you how to switch from hybrid to power assist. At the moment, I've actually just switched it over to hybrid. So if I tilt the bike, you'll hear it. I'm on assist free and I throttle. Can you hear it? There's the wheel. So that's fully, that's on throttle only. So if I release, so that's in hybrid mode in level three only. Level one and two are still pedal assist. Throttle doesn't work. It only works in level three in hybrid. So I'll put the bike back down. So to switch back to assist mode, I'm going to power off. I pull in the left brake and I power on. I'll use two hands as I can. And I hold the left brake in for between 10 and 20 seconds. That should do me. I'm going to power off. I don't really need know if you need to power off and power on again, but I always do for some reason. Power on. Now, if I go to level three now, I tilt. Nothing. No throttle. So that is your legal setting. Pedal assist. Level one, two, and three. And it says assist underneath. So if you then want to switch the throttle on, power off, or go into hybrid mode. Throttle fully engaged, brake in, power on, keep the brake in, hold it for between 10 and 20 seconds. Release. I'm going to go to level three, tilt the bike, and there you go. You're back in hybrid mode with throttle working in assist free, or the Chinese call it gear, which is very confusing considering you've got a, a seven gears over here as well, you know, the manual gears. So I want to switch back. 
Got a power off. I want it road legal for my first test on the road. Brake in. See, now I'm doing it one-handed, power on. Hold it for 10 to 20 seconds. Release. I'm going to go to free just to check to see if it's on throttle still. And the throttle's dead. So now you're back in the legal free modes of power assist. Well, that's basically it for now. Just a, a quick run through. I'll talk about the suspension and other features once I get out on the ride. As I said, it's extremely blowy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close this video down here and the next video will be the test ride. And what we'll do, we'll try out all the assist levels and hopefully get some private land and open it up. As I said, I have taken it out um, twice before. So, you know, I've, I've got a rough idea of what it can do with my weight on it but we'll talk about that on the next video so if you've liked this video uh, please don't forget to su subscribe and uh, hit the thumbs up button and there will be obviously more e-bike videos as and when so uh, for now goodbye <laughs>